At this point, our local area network is fully connected as we've seen with the successful pings in that each device can connect to the other. Our next task is going to be to implement virtual local area networks so that we have a VLAN or a virtual local area network for the accounting department, another VLAN for the marketing department, and finally another VLAN for the human resources department. There are a number of reasons why we might want to do that. Uh, perhaps we want to create additional broadcast domains to be able to isolate broadcasts within the department. Or maybe we'd like to apply some security because right now we really don't have a way to apply any sort of security policy that would prevent any one host from communicating with another. So let's now go to the console of our switch, HQ, and get ready to set up some virtual local area networks. First thing we're going to do here is to go into enable mode, which gets us to privileged exec so that we can begin to do some configurations. Before we do anything, let's go into configuration mode and set up a host name. Right now we still have the default host name of switch. It will use the host name of HQ to match what's labeled on our topology. And now we're going to implement virtual local area networks. To do that, we're first going to create the VLANs with a VLAN ID number and a name, and then we will assign the switch ports to the VLAN that we want them to be a member of. You can see that I created the VLANs by using the VLAN command and I supplied the VLAN ID number and then the VLAN name. I'm going to exit from VLAN config mode and then go into interface configuration mode to begin configuring each interface for each of the six PCs to put it into the proper VLAN. Notice that I've used the interface range command to save myself some typing. Rather than type this once for each port that I want to configure, I can use a range of port numbers, and that's really handy if you're putting a larger number of interfaces into the same VLAN. Now that I'm in interface range configuration mode, I can use the switch port access VLAN command to put the first two ports of the HQ switch into VLAN 10, which is the proper VLAN for the accounting department. I'm also going to use the switch port mode access command to make sure that this switch interface is always in access mode, which basically means that it will never be a trunk. Now trunking, VLAN trunking is a topic that we'll cover in part two. But for now, let's just make the point that if it's going to be a switch interface that is connected to an end station device like a computer or a printer, typically we want that switch port to be in access mode. So let's complete our implementation of VLANs by putting the switch interfaces for the marketing department into VLAN 20 and for the human resources department into VLAN 30. So with all that done, let's take a look at our running configuration and review what we've done. I've got my screen arranged so that you can see all of the fast Ethernet interfaces to which we have devices connected. That's FA01 through FA06. And our first two are in VLAN 10. Our next two are in VLAN 20, which is the marketing department. And the last two are VLAN 30, which is the human resources department and FA07 and FA08 we did not use. Let's take a brief review of where we are. We have built this topology consisting of a switch and six PC workstations. And after we finished constructing our topology, we loaded it into the simulator and put IP addresses and subnet masks on all of the PCs and saw that we could ping from each PC to the other, verifying that we had proper connectivity between all of our devices. What we've just finished doing is to create three VLANs on this switch, which has the effect of making this one physical switch behave just as if it were three separate logical switches. 
After we created the VLANs, we put the two switch interfaces that connect to the accounting department PCs in the first VLAN, which is VLAN 10. And then we did the same thing for the marketing department. We took the two switch interfaces that connect to the marketing department PCs and we put them into VLAN 20. And for human resources, we did the same thing in VLAN 30. So let's go to the command prompt of the first PC in the accounting department and let's try to ping the other PC in the accounting department. And that ping is successful as we would expect it to be. And let's go to the marketing department, try that out. This first PC in the marketing department is at address 192.168.10.3 right here. So let's see if we can ping four right here. And we can, but now let's try to see what happens if we go back to the first PC in the accounting department, which is at 192.168.10.1. And let's see if we can ping from there to this first PC over in the marketing department, which is 192.168.10.3. And we can see that that ping fails as we would expect because recall that these two workstations are in a separate VLAN from these two, also separate from these two. So effectively, we have subdivided our local area network into three separate local area networks by way of the VLANs that we have configured on the switch. All right, that brings us to the end of this video, but it's certainly not the end of the story because we're not going to be satisfied to only be able to have connectivity between the workstations in each department. Everything that we've been talking about up to now has been a function occurring at layer two. When we pick up in the next video, we're going to extend this discussion and talk about inter-VLAN routing.